So what do you do when the microphone is on you? Hey, John Terry, the Black Belt Leader, and I want to talk about crafting an attention-getting message that works. You know, no matter what your product or service is today, your audience, i.e. the customer that you're serving, typically has more choices available today than ever before. Think about this. They are daily bombarded with marketing from any and every available media source, both online and offline. Every one of those media sources trying to get their attention, trying to entice them to buy their product or service and not yours. Now, for your audience, this is confusing. But much of the advertising that we see today in the marketplace, again, both online and offline, has become very generic, very homogenous in nature. Everybody's touting the same or very similar products and services, and everybody is promising the very same or a similar outcome, maybe. Now, what the audience really wants answered is one question, and it's a question nobody's really answering, and it's an opportunity when the mic is turned on you to create and craft a compelling message that gets the audience's attention. What question is it they want answered? Why should I choose you over any and every other available option to me, including doing nothing? Now, out of all the doors your audience could walk through, you want them to pick your door, but unless your door stands out, they don't know that your door is different than any other door that's available to them. And while the question I just posed, why should I choose you as a consumer over any and everybody else? Well, that's probably the most important question that your audience wants answered. It's likely the least rehearsed aspect of your sales presentation. So think about this. You're in the checkout line at the deli. You're checking in at the gym. You're attending a chamber function or you're at a networking event and somebody comes up to you and says, what do you do? How do you respond to that? That says a lot about how prepared or not you are when the microphone is turned on you. Now, if you're like most people, you fumble and bumble because you really don't know how to introduce yourself. You don't really know who you are and what you do in such a way that you can share it concisely with an audience. So when a prospective customer or referral partner asks you a question and you don't know what to say, you bumble and stumble your way through it, and they walk away confused, not knowing whether or not you can actually help them in some way. Now, this is costing you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars every single year. So when someone asks, what do you do? It's your opportunity to stand up on the stage and be noticed. It's your opportunity to uniquely position yourself in such a powerful way that you eliminate competition. You immediately let that person know that you are someone they need to learn more about because you can help them solve a problem nobody else seems to care about or wants to pay attention to the need that customer has. So I guess the question for you and I is this, how do you stand out in the crowd? How do you become the red door in a room full of gray doors? How you answer the question, what do you do, is so, so important because the goal of getting the answer to that question is to get your client to ask a second question. If someone says, what do you do, and you share a compelling story with them that gets your attention, you want that individual who asked the first question to follow up that says, that's interesting. How do you do that? So you need what I like to call a power positioning statement. Now, I mean, you have had this referred to as an elevator speech or a unique selling proposition or an elevator pitch, but what is it? It's the idea that you've got the length of a typical elevator ride to get your client's attention. So when the doors open, rather than getting out and going on to their destination, they stay in the elevator with you, wanting to learn more about who you are, what you do, and how you can help them in some way. In essence, out of all of the doors the client could choose to go through to solve their problem, your door becomes the only door that is of interest to them. That's why a power positioning statement is so, so important. It does just what it says. It positions you powerfully in the eyes of your prospect as the answer to the problem that they want solved. 
the answer to the question that they want answered. What does it do? It uniquely positions you as an authority figure, the expert, the best person in the room. And if given the choice, who doesn't want to work with an expert? If given a choice, who doesn't want to work with the best? So when it's your opportunity to grab the mic and they ask the question, tell me what you do, there are four many questions you've got to answer in that very short elevator travel time slot to be able to let the customer know who you are and what you uniquely do. You've got to answer the question, why you, who you serve, how you help them, and what outcome you can create that allows them to be able to solve a problem or to achieve a goal or a perspective. So let's dive a little deeper into each of those. Why you? As part of your power positioning statement, you've got to be able to let individuals know specifically what you do. Specifically, what problem can you help your client, customer, or patient solve that they're dealing with right now? Why you? You have to answer the question, what makes you unique or different from everybody else that's vying to get their attention? And essentially, you're trying to answer that initial question, why should they choose you over any and other available option to them, including doing nothing? Now, you not only have to tell them why you, you have to tell them who you serve by letting them know whether or not they are an ideal candidate for what it is that you uniquely do. So essentially what you're letting them know is this. Out of all the customers that you could serve, who is best served by your talent, your knowledge, your experience, and the tools and resources that you have available to help them? Of course, you can help everyone, but if you give a generic answer to this question of who you serve, you become so generic that people don't have the opportunity to say, yeah, that's what I want. Now, how do you help them? You need to understand and let them know that you know what's going on in their head, that you understand the fears and concerns that are keeping them awake at night, and you can help them alleviate those problems and make them go away. You are a problem solver, and you let them know what specific problems you can solve for them. You let them know the goals or an objectives that you can help them achieve, and you get very specific here. Because the goal is to get them to say, that's exactly what I'm looking for or not, so they either opt in or opt out of having the opportunity to work with you. And, of course, you want to be able to answer the outcome, what outcome do you create for them? Essentially, how does what you do specifically benefit them at a personal level? You want this particular aspect of what you share with them. Let them know what they're going to experience or realize as a result of working with you. So you're really taking a two-pronged approach in creating a power positioning statement. Number one, you're letting the individual customer know that you understand their wants or their needs, and you're explaining to them why you are the very best choice to help them solve that want or that need. But at the same time, you're utilizing a power positioning statement to very specifically and very nichely target the specific type of customer that you prefer to do business with, and at the same time, repel everyone else that you prefer not to do business with. So the big question you may be asking at this point is, okay, John, how do you do that? You want to create, as far as a desired outcome for you, you want to create a blueprint that essentially answers the question, why pick me? So if we're looking to create a power positioning statement, you need a why pick me blueprint that you can put together in essence four key statements that once put together in a formula are going to allow you to specifically answer those four many questions we've talked about. The first one is why you. So as a, and here you want to uniquely describe yourself in such a way that gets your customer's attention on a personal, emotional level. 
And then you want to say, as a, how you describe yourself, I help, and here you're going to define very specifically who your ideal customer is. And from there, you're going to let them know how you are going to specifically help them so they can achieve some desired outcome. You're going to share the benefit with them that they're going to experience as a result of working with you. So let's put these four sentences together. As a, here you're going to describe yourself very uniquely in a colorful, emotionally connecting way. I help my ideal client, you're going to define who that is, to do or accomplish something so they can enjoy a unique experience or realize a personal benefit as a result of working with you. Now, what I'd like to do is to give you a couple of examples of what that looks like in terms of some different ways that you can take this framework, this Why Pick Me blueprint, and create your own unique power positioning statement. So let's take a look at one from a dentist. As a spectacular smile specialist, I help teenagers who are embarrassed by crooked teeth create a Hollywood envying smile at a price their parents can afford so they can comfortably light up a room. Now, think about that statement as compared to, I'm an orthodontist. I'm a dentist that does braces. Big deal. So does half a dozen or even more other dentists in your community. Nothing wow or pizzazz about that. Nothing that allows you to stand out in the crowd and create that red door moment in a room of gray doors. But as a spectacular smile specialist, you're speaking to a future outcome you know those teenagers are wanting and those parents are wanting for their kids. So what are you saying? As a spectacular smile specialist, someone who specializes in creating spectacular smiles, I help teenagers, a very specific audience, embarrassed by crooked teeth, create a Hollywood envying smile at a price their parents can afford so they can confidently light up a room. Can you see how that gets an individual to say, well, that's interesting. Tell me how you do that. Now, notice here we've talked about helping teenagers. We specifically opted everybody else out. But how many adults do you know that have crooked teeth that could say, hey, I know you do that for teenagers, but could you also do that for me? Or you could simply replace teenagers with adults who are embarrassed by crooked teeth and speak to an entirely different audience by making one simple tweak to a power positioning statement. But here's what we know. When you go narrow in your niche and you exclude everybody else out, people that want that benefit for themselves are going to say, look, I know I'm not your target audience, but can you also do that for me? Well, of course you can if that's in your market and you want to work with adults. Maybe you do, maybe you don't if you're a dentist. But notice how going narrow can allow you to go wider by letting folks know specifically who you serve. Does this make it easy for someone to be able to refer you at the same time as a spectacular smile specialist? Somebody who desires that as a desired outcome for themselves or a family member? Absolutely. Well, let's talk about architects. You can be an architect that designs residential homes, but again, architects are a dime a dozen. What if as a power positioning statement, rather than saying I'm an architect that does residential homes or I'm a draftsman that does residential home drawings, what if you said this, as a dream home designer, I help first-time home builders turn their vision of an ideal perfect home into a one-of-a-kind work of art so they can move in without having to sweat the details, so they can get into the home of their dreams on time and under budget, guaranteed. Now, in this particular example, this architect or designer is going a little step beyond that and maybe is also a general contractor because they're going to guarantee their results. But again, notice what is they've done on the front end. Rather than saying, I'm an architect or a draftsman that does residential home blueprints, I am a dream home designer. Who do I help? First-time home builders. 
What do I help them do? Turn their vision of their ideal perfect home into a one-of-a-kind work of art they can move into without having to sweat the details. This allows them to get into the home of their dreams on time and under budget, guaranteed. Who doesn't want that if you're a first-time home builder or a second or a third-time home builder that's had to deal with delays? And you're able to guarantee that? Do you think you've got someone's attention? This is the power of a power positioning statement. You as an architect or a draftsman share a conversation like this with someone that says, tell me what you do. You're definitely going to get, well, that's interesting. Tell me how you do that. And now all of a sudden, they've invited you to go deeper, and they've expressed interest and said, I am either a candidate for you, or I know someone who needs this or wants this, and I could be a referral partner for you. So now let's think about a financial advisor, an insurance agent, or a stockbroker that works in the college funding market. Now, insurance agents and stockbrokers, again, are a dime a dozen, and there's hundreds of those in any particular community all vying for the same customers. But what if rather than holding yourself out just like everybody else, you created a red door moment in a room of gray doors when you said, as a college funding innovator, I help families with college-bound students get accepted at the school of their dreams and qualify for all of the financial aid they're eligible for so they can pursue a quality education without breaking the family bank. Now, if somebody had an opportunity to say, hey, I'm an insurance agent that helps people fund for college, or I'm a stockbroker that helps people plan for college, do you think they're going to get as much attention as somebody who says, I'm a college funding innovator? I help people get accepted at the school of their dreams to qualify for all the financial aid they're eligible for so they can get the education they dreamed of without putting the family in the poorhouse. That is definitely going to get somebody to raise their hand and say, tell me how you do that. In every one of these examples I've given to you, as you're sharing that power positioning statement, you want the audience at the end of that very short and brief statement to ask the question, how do you do that? That's the goal of a power positioning statement, positioning you as an authority figure, the expert, the best, the go-to person to get that done. Now, when we're talking about a power positioning statement, let me give you a couple of caveats. It is important that you speak the client's language. You want to make sure that you avoid industry speak. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. We all have jargon that we use that we understand that a typical consumer does not. And we begin to use terminology and phraseology and large words or industry speak that we're familiar with that they're not. They smile, they nod, they say thank you, and they move on, not understanding at all who you are and what you do. So you want to make sure that you avoid industry speak. You also want to make sure that you are speaking directly to a very specific need or concern, or you're speaking directly to a very specific fear or goal, or objective. Here, you don't want to be all things to all people. You want to be very concise in what it is that you are offering to solve because you want that individual to raise their hand and say, ooh, ooh, that is exactly what I want. So you want to make sure that you are very, very specific about what you do, and you are very, very specific about your outcome. And when I talk about speaking the client's language, you want to make sure that as you're looking at your power positioning statement, you want to ask, can an eighth grader understand this? You know, it's interesting that as an author, and I'm told as I'm writing books, and I've, I've now got four books in the public domain and a couple of more that are coming. Actually, my fifth book just released, so I take that back. I now have five books in the public domain. But as a result of that, as I'm working with my publisher, we're constantly thinking into, and as I'm having my manuscripts reviewed, we're reviewing it for all the appropriate grammar, but also the context to make sure that an eighth grader can understand that because most of the public reads on around an eighth grade level. So if we're using our power positioning statement in such a way that an eighth grader gets it, simple sells when it comes to power positioning. So you want to make sure that your message is, number one, short 
and concise. The goal of a power positioning statement, again, an elevator ride, 20 to 30 seconds. You want it to be no more than 90 words. You want to tell people what you do, but not how you do it. The secret sauce of how you do it is what they're hiring you to do. You want to pique their interest by letting them know what you do. And goal number one behind that is you want to be able to continue the conversation so that they ask, how do you do that? And then your goal in continuing the conversation is to set a next step with the prospect. So after you've had an opportunity to present your power positioning statement, that individual has come back and says, that's interesting. Tell me how you do that. You then would go into a prepared message that gives an overview of what you do and essentially at a very high level how you do what you do without giving away your secret sauce. And then you want to always make sure that you end up with a very specific call to action. If you don't have a call to action, never use a power positioning statement because a power positioning statement is going to get your audience to say, how do you do that? And then if you tell them what you do and give them some idea of how you can serve them and the outcome they're going to experience, then you want to give them an opportunity to engage with you. And so your call to action could be something very simple that says, you know, here's what I would love for us to do. I would love for us to schedule some time next week, or I would love to get on a call later this week, or create some definitive action step, typically within the next 48 to 72 hours, to get that individual to commit and follow through with a next step, whether it is a phone call or a meeting or a furtherance of the discussion or some manner to move the conversation forward. So the power positioning statement is huge in the fact that it's going to allow you to attract the type of customers that you want to work with while repelling those that you don't. And as you get really good at this, you're going to find the deli market, standing in line at Starbucks, standing in line at the grocery store, having an opportunity to be at a chamber function or a networking event, and somebody says, tell me what you do, that creates an opportunity for you to identify whether you've got a qualified prospect or a referral partner that can help you further your business in terms of what you do. Now, as a thank you for having an opportunity to allow me to share this insight with you, I'd love to share with you a free template that outlines this power positioning statement. So here's how you access that. I want to encourage you to go to beablackbeltleader.com and go to the courses tab. And you're going to look for a particular button that says Master Selling. And you're going to click on that particular icon, and there you're going to see the power positioning statement, the Why Pick Me blueprint that's available as a free download, as a thank you for allowing me to share this important information with you. And while you're there, I encourage you to also take a look at the other tools and resources and course content that we have that can allow you to continue to learn, to discover, develop, and deploy your own unique Black Belt Leader Within and have an opportunity to scale your success at whatever it is that you do. I'm John Terry, the Black Belt Leader, and while you're at my website, let me encourage you to also visit the Contact Us page, and there you can connect with me on social media, where on a regular basis, I'm sharing insight, tips, tools, and resources, all free to give you an opportunity to up-level your own personal growth as you're discovering, developing, and deploying your unique Black Belt Leader within and learning to live life with Black Belt Excellence as a Black Belt Leader in life. After all, why just be a leader? When you can be a black belt leader, that's what we teach you to do. We teach you how to master your life here at Black Belt Leadership. So thanks for joining me. Go grab that free resource online. And while you're there, don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.